Okay, folks, hi. Uh, my, this is the official start. This is it right here. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Stevenson. You cannot see me. That is not Mark Stevenson. It's casual Friday, and I took advantage of that, so I'm in Bermuda shorts and sandals. So I don't have to be part of the webinar today. Um, but I would like to welcome Aaron Knight. And uh, the, the company that he represents happens to share his last name. And uh, here at Cold Essie, we have been using uh, George Knight. He presses, I think, for the 15 years that we've been in business. It's really, it's really been a long time. And every time somebody mentions another heat press in the building, all of our techs get the hives. They get, you know, because one of the one of the things about a quality heat press is that it uh, it saves. I'm gonna do a commercial for you. Is that it saves you a lot of support issues because. We'll get, especially in the direct to garment printer um, business, uh, we'll get strange, and in rhinestones, strange things happen with bad heat presses. If there's a cold spot, three of the rhinestones won't press in the same spot every time. If, uh, if it's too hot, then 10% of your DTG printer shirt will burn, and the ink will be a different color instead of, uh, instead of having a nice even print. So if you are considering buying a, uh, a used heat press, or if you're on Alibaba looking at heat presses, um, please stop right now. It's not worth it. You should buy a. These are these are a great heat press at a great price. You should definitely uh, pay attention and uh, and ask your questions of, of of Aaron Knight at any time. Aaron, go ahead and, and let's see what you got. Mark, I really appreciate the uh, the propaganda. Uh, no problem. Some, you can you can literally make up for the difference uh, between a, a disposable overseas China, what we call a disposable China press, uh, and the difference between our press, and one lost job. Uh, so, so you really, with equipment, with durable goods, not disposable goods, you really get what you pay for. Uh, and, and that's kind of what we're here to show you is uh, a different line of uh, swingers and clamshells, and I'll show you some air-operated presses uh, a little bit further off to the side here in a bit. But we're here just to cover the product line and then ask some questions and, and just give you a basic sense of uh, everything we make. We make a lot of different presses that aren't shown here, get into a lot of industrial stuff. But the first thing I, I wanted to focus on is just the difference between um, the clamshells that uh, Coldesi focuses on because they have the auto pop-up uh, uh, motion uh, that's very useful for DTG printing. Uh, uh, these, are, these are most commonly sold by Coldesi and have been very successful with them. And uh, I wanted to introduce you or just make you aware that uh, the swingaways, in fact, in the overall heat press industry, are actually far more popular. Uh, and it's something you should keep in the back of your brain uh, as you look to expand or uh, add a press on, the difference between. So what is the difference between them? The main thing is, is a clamshell, just like its name, uh, operates at an angle or a clamshell. It saves a little space because it's not swinging way out to the side. Um, and it's a little bit more portable. Uh, and it's great for garments, thin materials, uh, but if you start to get into product that gets very thick, uh, plaques, tiles, awards, signage, things that are rigid goods into sublimation, uh, new processes, you won't make it work in a clamshell. It's going to be very difficult because a clamshell will not adjust for really thick materials to press evenly. Uh, a right. clamshell will come down and hit the back, not the front. And that's where we get into swingway. So those are the two main styles: is clamshell versus swingway. And as you can see here, the swingway takes up a little more space to the side, but you have much better open access. You know, you don't have heat blasting you uh, right in the face. You have a lot more open access to get right on top of your work and lay out product or very complex uh, materials, lettering, numbering, uh, uh, crystals and rhinestones that aren't pre-placed on a transfer sheet. A lot of reasons why you want more open access. And with these swingway presses, I'm not sure if you can see the video, yeah. but there's a, there's a cutaway under here where you can load the shirt and thread it around the table from the back forward. And now what does that do? That allows you to work with split shirts, threaded dress shirts, in the face-up position. In other words, the neck is here, the uh, waist is down here, and you can look at things right side up. Whereas yeah. if you need to put a shirt on the clamshell, you're threading it from the front back, and you're kind of working upside down. When you split a shirt open, the shirt is upside down. And sometimes that can be really difficult with certain jobs uh, when locating. But the swing away, no matter how thick your material is, it's always pressing parallel. So it's always going up and down parallel on the product. You can adjust the height very easily, not just to adjust the pressure, but also the height. So you can press materials up to two inches thick, uh, very, very thick materials. You can get in there 
and press them and lock them down. So that's the two main styles of t-shirt presses. Uh, the swing away is manual or air operated, pneumatic, and I'll, I'll get to that next, whereas the clamshell is manual or pop-up. Uh, it's kind of a hybrid automatic. You're still locking it down manually, but it pops up uh, uh, at the end of the timer. And Aaron, uh, are, is the both the, the swing way is also suitable for direct garment curing, correct? Oh, absolutely. absolutely okay. Yes, they're going to give you the same pressure range of no pressure to very heavy pressure, and because you can set them from different height materials, that means you can set them to hover. You can set your pressure to the point where it's just hovering and curing or warming materials, which some DTG processes need, and you can set them to fully clamp. The difference is, is you're going to open that manually as opposed to an auto pop up unless you get into an automatic press. And uh, I'll just kind of jump over to automatic and then we'll come back to some of the manual presses. But let me just point this at some of our automatic machines. Look at that. I went in the right direction. Nice. And uh, here's an example of uh, some automatic presses that I forgot to turn on uh, before getting ready. But uh, what you have is the same exact digital control. So same digital control, same heating, same lifetime warranted platens. But uh, the key is, is uh, when you swing it over, you're just hitting a button that's automatically pressing, automatically releases, and all you're doing is swinging it back and forth with just a pinky finger. Uh, that's all that's necessary. I'll show you that once more. Let me give you a little better angle. Now, the reason why swing weight presses are so important is uh, I'm finding a lot of mom and pop shops uh, and small businesses start getting into 200, 300, 400 piece orders uh, where they're using the press four hours a day, five hours, six hours a day. When you get into volume like that, you're either bench pressing all day uh, and you can cancel your membership to the gym. Uh, and uh, if you're you know, an older mom and pop shop, uh, it's just not something you're, you're you know, looking to do in your 40s, 50s, and 60s is bench press. I don't know. It sounds like a feature to me. Sounds like you should be selling the, the exercise portion of the show. <laughs> Yeah, the, the gym budget saver. Uh, it <laughs> saves your gym budget because you're doing all your workouts on a manual press. Uh, that is the feature of a manual press. But if you are pressing that much, you really need to seriously consider a seven, eight hundred dollar difference uh, on a push button air operated press. That does run on air, but it's like a little five gallon Home Depot compressor or, or a little you know five to ten gallon Sears compressor. It costs very little. You can put them you know, uh, miles away in a shed somewhere down in the basement or get a silent compressor online. And it just allows you to also set your pressure and actually have a, an actual PSI readout. I'm not sure you can see the needle pointing here unless you have super HD. But what I'm doing is I'm just turning this knob and it's adjusting your pressure readout so you can have a very specific feedback and repeatable pressure setting on, on your presses. Same with the smaller sizes. Well, the larger. Air operated is very much available, very popular. Uh, we're swamped with orders right now because people are finding that if they're pressing that off and it just makes an absolute sense. They pay for themselves instantly. Super consistent. No matter who the operator is, whether a tiny high school kid or a long term, you know, super well built uh, uh, employee, everybody's pushing the same buttons and the, uh, the results are the same consistency. So that's kind of a plug for air operated. Keep that in mind uh, as you, you know, continue to grow in heat pressing and uh, heat press production. Uh, any, any questions at this point on just the basics of uh, heat presses? Well, there was a question about patches and how long to heat press a, a cap press. Okay. But um, I don't know that you can answer that. How, you know, um, this Coleman & Company sells a patch kit that has heat transfer material on it. Um, and uh, and we use a cap press to press that on there. I'm not sure what the time is, Mary. I will check what Coleman and Company recommend. Unless you have somebody that's doing that, Aaron. Uh, for the patches? Yeah. Uh, and the question was, what were the settings? I uh, you cut out for just a second. Oh, there. sorry. It's uh, yes. How much time do you allow to heat press a patch on a baseball cap? Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I do know the answer. Most embroidered appliques, most embroidered patches, and and heat sealed. Applied materials range from 350 to 375 in temperature, and they're almost always about 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, you usually have a pretty extended time compared to really quick ink transfers uh, to heat up the entire patch. So I'm going to say 15 to 20 seconds. Start yourself at 20, 
and let it cool before you really start mangling around or, or you know, press it with your hand or with a mat or something uh, because you want those adhesives to solidify and really grab the material before you start pulling the cap off and, and mangling it while it's still soft and while the adhesive is still good. They can kind of pull away a little, so it's very important right after pressing uh, to, to let the heat, let the sting out yeah, of it. You know, sounds let the good. Sting. 15 to 20 seconds. Um, the other question was, the uh, you mentioned that the swingway is good for DTG. Is there an auto pop-up on the manual swingway or no? No. Uh, with manual swingway, the only way to get automatic is to go with the air operated. Uh, okay. there's, because the mechanism is kind of over center and locking, yes. uh, there's nothing to hold it and then push it back up like our gas shocks on the clamshells. The clamshells always have gas shocks, so we're taking we're taking advantage of those to make up a, a pop-up mechanism. That makes sense. Now we've got a we've got several customers on that um, are interested in our we've got a, a what we call the brush and bake and the cut and press. These are graph tech cutter base where you apply vinyl and apply you know rhinestone transfers and those are packaged with the DK um, with the small the, with the JP series. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the hobby presses. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Could you just talk about those and make sure that uh, that the guys online know how to use them? So, uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago, um, Haynes T-shirt maker software started selling transfers uh, papers in stores and in office maxes, and they needed a, a better thing than a hand iron to, to make these transfers work. But they didn't want to spend $1,200 or $1,400 on a heat press, and we came up with the first hobby presses. We call them hobby presses, uh, but they're really what we call light use or non-digital presses. Right. And uh, an example is, is, here's our smallest one. That's the one we first came out with. And uh, they're light enough. You can actually hold them up to a webcam. <laughs> and, uh, Everybody needs to do that eventually. It, it'll happen eventually. Yeah. Not going to do that with the 16 by 20 press, 200 pounds, of course. But sure. these, uh, this is size 9 by 12, and, and that size is just a little bigger than an 8.5 by 11 transfer paper. Uh, but it's a great starter press at less than $300, $270. Yeah. A, a fully controllable uh, heat press with an actual thermostat control, an actual little you know battery di digital timer, full pressure adjustment. It's a swing away, so you can print thicker items. Uh, but they're very useful. Uh, and, and by the way, here's the larger one. This is a uh, 14, a 12 by 14, so it's a little bit bigger size. This is a little tougher to hold up for uh, the camera. But that there you basically... go. That's the rest of that workout. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't have bad backs at the. Fa this is the factory right behind the wall here uh, that you're looking at. But these presses, um, we love them because they get everybody started. Uh, you know, that's our secret. Am, uh, ambition, and that's our nefarious plan, is get people start very inexpensively. Uh, usually people end up, after a few years, if they're still pressing, they will move on to a digital press. Yeah. You uh, end up keeping that because they love it so much, uh, and they keep it as a backup. Uh, so, so they're great starter machines, great to get people into the business and going. Uh, but you're going to find that if you're running a business and you're taking regular orders on a regular basis, you're not going to run that business on a hobby press alone. Eventually, you will say, OK, it's time to get a digital press where I can digitally set my temperature and my time right. and have a little bit more pressure, uh, you know, bigger size. Size is always an issue with heat pressing is how large of an area can I press at once. Those are limited in size um, and, and limited in your temperature control. You get a basic range to get things done, but uh, better consistency and larger size and more digital control. That makes sense. Is a um, Shirley's got a question. Will the manual pressure work for rhinestone press? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, compared to, like, screen printing transfers and things that, you know, aren't very much related to cold desi business, the rhinestones and crystals are very forgiving. Um, there are different heights and thicknesses, but they very uh, nicely sink into the padding so everything is heated evenly. Uh, so, yes, the manual presses will do a great job on that. Uh, but you want to make sure you have a good clamp pressure. You want to make sure when you lock it down, you, you clamp well. And actually, I'd like to uh, I'd like to just sidetrack on that because pressure is the most common uh, tech support call we get. Uh, there's no more common tech issue and, and, and uh, related 
concern or confusion or question on that. And if we can just address that here for posterity, uh, it's going to solve a lot of people's issues, a lot of people's concerns, and uh, really make people much more confident about what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, we'll say, what PSI do I set at? And I, I say, well, you can't. If you have a manual press, you have no PSI control, like with the, the air operators I just showed you. Uh, and so they say, well, they tell me it's set for 50 PSI. And then I have to say, well, if you had an air-operated press, it probably wouldn't be 50, because every air-operated press will apply different pressures at the same pressure setting. So it gets right. very confused. Here's the rule of thumb. Here's the number one heat pressing rule of thumb that will solve 90% of your life's issues. Uh, wow. And this is it. Basically, uh, if you can close the press with one hand, if you can close the press with one hand for most transfers, especially vinyl cut materials, especially crystals, rhinestones, and uh, the embroidered applique patches, especially ink transfers, not as much the DTG, uh, but, but just about everything else. If you can close it with one hand, you're asking for trouble. Right. You're asking for trouble. You're going to probably have issues and problems pop up. If, however, you set your pressure so you have a reasonable two-handed clamp. Now, what's a two-handed clamp? If you have a hard time closing it with one hand, but you can close it very reasonably with two hands, that's the sweet spot. You just need a good two-handed clamp. Uh, very often, customers, when they first get a press, they'll just let it sit. You know, they just let it down and sit. Well, that's no pressure, and stuff will come out wrong. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they'll set it so oh, it just kind of clicks down a little bit. That's trouble. And then sometimes they're you know, setting it so they have to jump on it and put body weight on it or, or stand or, or they just kind of get up well, and sit no on it. Way. That's the other end of the spectrum. That's not necessary. Well, you I, I mean, you know, it, it's tough because we have some very tiny customers too. We have some yeah. very petite folks that, that end up yeah. in the business. I still stick, even with the small petite customers, the two-handed clamp, just a nice two-handed ka thunk. That is a technical engineering term from the heat press world. <laughs> if you can cut thunk, uh, you're going to be in great shape. You won't wear yourself out, and you won't lose product. So a good two-handed clamp is, is very, very necessary. Our presses, our, our manual presses, develop far more pressure than anything else on the market. So if there's something out there that can be heat pressed, it'll definitely work on here uh, before it works anywhere else. There you go. And we've got a, a couple of questions for, um, from sure. Vince. He's got a, a 16 by 20 clam shell and the 14 by 16 multi press. Yep. And and he it seems that the 14 by 16 runs hotter than the than the bigger one. Could that be true? No, but uh, the digital we use the same digital control on all the presses, and it is calibratable. You can calibrate it. And what that means is, uh, you know, we shy away from using laser guns because they can have reflectivity issues on the flattened surface. But just for for just for testing. You can take a laser gun, or, or and we have a probe online uh, that you can buy, and then return yeah, and it. Yeah, any company sells that too. It's great. Yeah, and, and we actually you have it as a customer courtesy. You can buy it, and the secret is you can return it at any time years later, and we'll credit you 100. percent We don't make you keep it. We nice. just let you have it and send it back for full credit. Not a problem. That's great. But you because you can check the temperature more accurately with the surface temperature and if you are running hotter because people know their presses people know what they're doing and if they sense you know I think I'm 20 degrees difference or, or something check it and with that pyrometer or we'll email it to you if you, if you have your own laser gun uh, there are very simple instructions to reset the controller so that every heat platen matches every screen so whatever it says on your screen, you can make that screen match exactly what you see in real life when you're measuring the heat platen surface. Gotcha. Don't and that applies to the swing away, to the to the DK series. All presses. Okay. And and please feel free to call us. We can solve any concerns much faster than uh, kind of wandering around in the darkness of the internet. Uh, or jump on our press and we have those instructions on our website and we have those uh, instructions. But, but keep I'm, us I'm glad Vince mentioned the uh, the multi press. Could you show off the interchangeable press that you've got there? Totally, totally missed that. Yes. Uh, let me. We have a really high tech um, way of pointing the camera. You've got an uh, excellent cameraman, by the way. The production yeah. shed. Uh, so I'll, I'll get over on uh, this side. I guess yep. it's stuff backwards. This is the uh, combo press. This is the multi-purpose press. This is our other swing away. It's a 14 by 16. 
sometimes that size uh, scares people off, but 14 by 16 will fill the full front of a shirt. You know, you'll get a full transfer on a 14 by 16 transfer press. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'll just show you the table size so you can see it. This is a Teflon wrap table. So that's the kind of coverage you'll get that's on a shirt. Good. So it's, it's very good. It's not oversized like the 16 by 20, but it's excellent. Now the beauty of this press is not only is it a swing away that you can adjust in height for different materials, just like the other swing away I was showing, but it's interchangeable. You can swap out attachments. Uh, here is a cap heat platen for doing caps. Instead of buying a separate standalone cap press, uh, you can swap this out in less than a minute. Uh, I have to do it at trade shows on the fly when someone asks, and uh, I'm always shocked uh, that I'm able to do it <laughs> under pressure in front of a lot of people. All you're doing is pulling this pin out of the handle, and there's a plug here on the side that you just unscrew and pop that off. The tables I showed you just pop right off, but you can switch over to caps. You can do plates. There's a mug attachment that just plugs in. You don't even have to take the heat platen off uh, for doing mugs. So very, very uh, popular press. Interestingly, you know, people think usually a multi-purpose machine is kind of mediocre at everything instead of really good at one thing. Right. This design uh, is the same as our swing away press. Same exact head design and heat flat design. Uh, but because it's a slightly smaller heat flat, it actually gets better pressure concentration of uh, 68. Uh, so it's the highest pressure concentration, uh, best frame quality. I found this, this is a 10, 20 year old, uh, 20 year lasting press. This is something that would actually be a foundation for your entire business. Fantastic. It also looks like there's a ton of room under that platen surface. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Mark. The other nice thing about this is, is this is kind of threadable from all directions. So you can thread a shirt from the side, from the front, or from the back. You swing this all the way out, thread a shirt around from the back. Uh, and these cables, we make custom ones for customers all the time that have like an anvil support. So you have the pedestal and then a support sticking out over the air with, with a little bit of an anvil. Uh, for sliding tote bag pockets or backpack pockets or things where you need a diving board or like a, a, an extended tongue yeah. that you can put on, uh, that we can make for this. Like, like sleeve platens that really slide a big jersey sleeve on uh, with no support underneath. So we can great. do that with um, this we've press. We've got a question. Uh, can we see the mug press? Yes. Okay. If you see. Uh, let, me, uh, <laughs> let me just... Swing this back over. Highly professional display here. So this is a mug press. Ask me any questions you like. Um, but this is uh, basically one of the only American-made, U.S.-made mug presses on the market. You'll see a lot of uh, presses, you know, for two, three, four hundred dollars, uh, and what they're again the throwaway disposable units to get started. Uh, this is a seven hundred dollar last the life of your business, 10 year, 20 year mug press uh, with very extended warranties on the flexible heater. Normally these are on other machines just throw away parts that you have to burn through right. all the time. Uh, not this one. This one has a three year, 3,000 mug warranty. And, and the, the attachment for the, um, for the multi-press is the same, same quality, same pressure. The multi-purpose combo press, uh, it basically, we just stole the heating element out of the mug press yep. and put it in a little frame without a control on it because we're using the control on the multi-purpose press. Gotcha. So whether it's the attachment for the combo press, the multi-purpose press, or whether it's the uh, dedicated mug press, they have the same type of warranty, same type of heater bend, very heavy duty, very high quality. That's great. We've got a, we've got a testimonial here. Uh, Vince, I'm hoping you'll let me use this on our website, but... Vince uh, said, I have every attachment for the multi-press and use all of them and love it. So there you go. Vince was also part of one of our success stories. So um, you can find he and his wife's story online at uh, coldessie.com under success stories. So thanks, Vince. Uh, any other questions? So we, we, we went over the swingway presses. We talked about the... Um, the, uh, you know, with the air and everything, we talked about the multi-press, we talked about the little ones. Um, Talk about large format um, and, and specialty presses. Yeah. Uh, presses, uh, you know, this is a very popular machine. We sell 
a lot of these DK8 label presses. It's just a little six by eight label press uh, for doing left chest logos and patches. Uh, it, it, it's very useful in the laundry uh, industries or patch and, and uh, logo uh, uh, businesses where people are just doing very small transfers. They don't want to press a big area of a garment. They want to concentrate just on a small area. So you have that square six by eight you know, label press. And then, of course, you have a dedicated cap press here. Um, but something that's really become very, very strong in our business, a major portion of our business is now large format. Large format means anything from 20 by 25 up to 3 feet by 5 feet, 4 feet by 8 feet. Yes, wow. believe it or not, we make regularly heat presses that are 3 by 5 feet and 4 by 8 feet. I wish what, I could what are people doing with those? Uh, really big stuff. Okay. Uh, really big stuff. Um, so, you know, what, um, all the all-over prints where you see full graphical uh, color everywhere bleeding right down into the stitches, that needs a large format press to press that entire design all at once. So we make big presses. Uh, anything you think of that you, you really need or if you're getting into an all-over print, uh, like for the jerseys and bike wear and, and things like that, uh, we're the ones that are making them. Yeah, they're doing very well. That's awesome. Okay. Um, what attachments come with the multi-press? Uh, none. None. You can add whatever you want. Uh, we don't want to charge you for anything you don't need. So okay. uh, this multi-purpose press is about $1,190, uh, $1,100. And, uh, and what's the size, just the native press? 14 by 16. 14, 14 by 16, by okay. That's the one that filled the full shirt. Yep. Uh, with that press, you can do anything thick. You, it has the padding for doing tiles, ceramic tiles. So we call it the shirt and tile press. Um, and then you add caps. You add mugs, you add plates, uh, which is a little rarer, and you add custom bottom and tables. And each add-on is what, like three or four thousand dollars? Is that what you're getting for those now? Yes, most of us <laughs> uh, me, and then just no. Uh, it's two hundred seventy-five dollars for caps. Okay. So to add, add baseball caps, to add caps is only two hundred seventy-five. We've already put most of it into the machine. We can just add those attachments for very little. Well, I mean, you're, and you're you're always going to need, even if you decide to do caps. You're always going to need to do flat, so it just makes sense to have have it all in one. You're basically saving, you know, 500 bucks by not having to add an entire cap press. Exactly, and same with the mugs. Uh, you know, if you know you're going to get into sublimation and, and into these other items, uh, and you already have the combo, 390 is a lot better than 750 uh, yeah. for for a full mug press. So it, it depends on what you're going to be doing and how much. Sometimes people will get the combo press, and a mug attachment, and they'll add additional mug presses because they're printing, you know, jobs of 500 mugs at a time. Yeah. Uh, so you can scale up. It, it's very scalable that way. Okay, cool. All right, any other questions, guys? We are we are just about at our 30-minute mark. Aaron turns into a pumpkin at 3.40, so we gotta got to get him <laughs> out of there. Uh, a couple closing comments, if, sure. if anyone has questions. Nope, go ahead. Uh, the other reason why we're enjoying such a great reputation uh, here at the factory and why we're, we're enjoying our biggest year ever, uh, 2015 is for some crazy reasons. Congratulations, we are too. In history, uh, is because we, we just developed a, gener a, a reputation for sales second and support first. Uh, one of the things you're buying when you buy a $1,400 uh, swing away press it's not just a $200 uh, ingot of steel that's going to last forever. Uh, you buy same-day response. Uh, when people call us, and we really encourage direct people who just call us directly, I, I will usually uh, be one of the people answering the phones uh, directly, is uh, we insist that uh, we're not allowed to go home until you're taken care of. Uh, and that is our American-made, American-supported uh, right. philosophy. You just take care of everyone and make sure everyone's resolved and answered and happy uh, before you go home. Uh, so we have a very strong same-day response, same-day support. And uh, because the press is so well built, uh, we can handle it very well. So yeah, we encourage nobody's going to call. Nobody's, it's all going to be easy stuff if they call. You forgot to plug it in, man. That, that's going to be the, the common problem. Yep, or pressure-related. Plus, plus pressure. um, everybody... Um, for, for everybody's benefit, point to the factory. Point to where it's all made. Uh, it's all back here. You know, you know, I can probably unplug this. Uh, let me do this. I, we didn't do this last time, but I think I can unplug the power without this dying. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. And uh, why don't we go wireless for just a minute, and I'll just show you uh, 
the uh, the craziness behind the curtain. Close your eyes if you get motion sick, guys. Yeah. Sorry uh, about by that. By the way, uh, Mary, gonna... I think the hat press is what six ninety five. Five ninety five. Five ninety five. Five ninety five. So let's get a view. Oh my goodness! I think we're wireless, and this is actually working. Wow, this is it's a, working. That's amazing. This is, uh, this is the entrance uh, from the side of the factory. And let's see if I can get you a really good view of the large format department. So uh, this is where we make them. Actually, here's a lineup right now. Hey there, how's it going? You're on live camera, by the way. Uh, <laughs> slow down. You're walking just a little okay. bit. Aaron. And. Uh, all right, let me show you the, uh, this is this is one of our four foot by eight foot presses we're putting together. Wow. And just to give you an idea of scale, there's one of our operators. So they're actually building a four foot by eight foot. That is a top and bottom heat press. It's actually a top and bottom heat press. And then this is the rest of the factory. Nice. And uh, we actually make stuff. This is an actual made in the USA uh, plant where we're actually putting together starting from raw sheets of steel, like you can see behind me, yep. and uh, actually plasma cutting. And uh, here's our machining aisle down here where all the things are being machined. You can see a big 30-ton crane. Uh, let me see if I can point right. Big 30-ton crane on the ceiling. But this is uh, probably awesome. kind of noisy. And there's an example of the factory. We're actually making our presses. Cool. That's great, Aaron. Thanks for the tour. I didn't expect to, uh, to get the inside look. I'm, I'm recording trade secrets right now, where we've, we've got, you know... Yeah, no, we're, we're not going into areas we shouldn't be. So oh, okay, I you're, see. You're I see. Online. I get it. So we're not, we're, not, we're not doing that. Okay, that's great. Um, well, honestly, that was, uh, that was terrific. I, um, I'm glad we're doing this next Monday morning at 8 a.m. So if, you, if anybody yeah. else would like to sign in, you can do that. Um, <laughs> No, this this has been great, Aaron. It's a it's it was a great um, great webinar. You asked a lot. You answered a lot of questions, and I think these guys are um, are all going to be, and we're getting compliments. So oh, um, thanks. I, I locked, locked myself out. That was the pause right there. That's okay. So set ourselves back up here in the showroom. So that was fun. I didn't know if that was going to work or not. Yeah, definitely. It's the it's it's the joys of, of webinars and, and the internet. We got a we got a compliment here that says they're much better than trade shows. So I appreciate that too, David. Um, all right, good. Well, I mean, all of you can uh, can buy it. I'm I'm going to um, send a little chat message here to everybody um, that you can um, you can get your George Knight heat presses at uh, ColemanandCompany.com. Or you can call and us here at Coldesi and do the same. Keep in mind that uh, always buying through the distributors is better than trying to buy direct from the factory. They're going to give you a better price. Uh, we can't compete with our distributors, uh, so it's a really good idea to have us in them supporting you and getting a better price. There you go. All right, Aaron, thanks very much. I appreciate it. This has been great. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care, everyone.